So now we have the privilege to hear from Shana Fernandez. Shana is um, the uh, MEC, the, the Member of Parliament here in the Western Cape for Social Development. When she first got involved in PFP, she was the Speaker for the Parliament in the Western Cape. Uh, and uh, it's been inspirational for us to see a politician uh, get her hands dirty, roll up her sleeves and just say, listen, this is not been beyond me to get actively involved. So Shana also has a beautiful story because she went back to the school where she uh, went to school. And Shana, we're delighted that you're with us today. We know you have a very busy schedule, like, like probably everybody on this call. Uh, well, we're delighted that you, that you managed to carve out time to be with us. And we'd love to hear your story of partners for possibility. Thank you, Louise, and good afternoon to everybody. I must say, time taken out, this time is well spent. Uh, Jan Louis and Juliet's story has just blown me away. But more importantly, it's just given me hope for this country of ours, which seemingly has lost its way. And when you hear stories like this, you, I am truly inspired. And it, it gives me hope for the future. And I think this is what we need to keep doing all the time. So my story goes back um, to my old neighborhood. Um, I, we had to relocate in the um, apartheid days from Deep River to an area called Retreat, which is pretty close to Lavender Hill. Most of you would know is one of the most dangerous areas on the Cape Flats. And I attended Squale Primary School. This was well over 50 years ago. I was then in Sub B when I started at school there. And then I went to high school, university, um, spent 30 years in banking. And uh, 2009, I was struck down with the H1N1 virus, which shut my system down completely. I lost my memory and it took me almost two years to recover. And through God's grace, um, I was afforded a second chance. And I then decided that I would use that second chance to pay it forward, not go back into corporate, but to invest in my community and people. And as it were, um, I was invited to attend a meeting and uh, then the next thing I was elected. But what, what got to me was Squirrel Primary had a valedictory in 2015. And I received an invitation, but the address for the valedictory was at Berkeley High School. And I thought, I never attended Berkeley High School, which as many of you would know in um, the apartheid era was on the other side of the line. I thought there were squirrels in, on the Cape Flats. And uh, I went to school and the learners, they could not believe that I could remember my, all my teachers by name. And I could share how the teachers made school a safe place to be. Uh, I looked forward to going to school. And um, I then made a commitment on that platform that I was going to work with Squirrel Primary and all ex-students to raise funds for the school to get their own school hall because I just felt that it was completely inappropriate that they needed to pay a rental to hire a hall outside of the area. Uh, what happened once I started working in the school, I discovered that the profile or the demographics of the learners had changed quite significantly from the time that I attended. And many of the children had come from very traumatized areas in terms of gang violence, uh, substance abuse, and, and, and. And one of the initiatives we introduced, um, I had a friend of mine who does trauma counseling, Claudia Ruet, and I invited Claudia, and on a voluntary basis for no payment, Claudia indicated that she would do a trauma-informed uh, care presentation to the SGB and the uh, educators, and the results were phenomenal. The teachers were blown away. They then got a different understanding of why children behave the way they do, especially when they come from deeply traumatized communities. And the feedback uh, was, was just phenomenal. Interestingly enough, we are now rolling our trauma-informed care through some of our schools in the province through the Department of Education. So Louise, that was a little seed that has grown. 
And then the other joy of our group um, were many of the principals in our circle were people I knew, uh, Kafka, I knew the principal, I knew Denver at Sullivan Primary. So we actually became a family. We weren't just random people meeting in a circle. We became connected and our facilitator, Sadiq, he was fabulous. What taught me? It taught me to listen more, observe and try to understand the lived experiences of our educators and principals on the ground. And being in government now, sitting in a cabinet, I can present a view of what happens inside a school in terms of a real experience, because I spent uh, half a day shadowing my school principal, Mr. Grant Paulson, and Grant too was an, a former pupil, so we had a connection. My one disappointment is that we never finished, uh, uh, we never, there's no end to this journey. So I asked Louise, can I continue? And she said, you can continue and do. So I am uh, contributing to my school and I am wanting to set up uh, a fund so that we can get those monies raised because I made a public commitment on a public platform. And then the other thing in terms of the program, and I shared this with Louise, is that I think 12 months is just too short. Juliet, you might agree with me. You're just getting to know your, your business partner and then your 12 months is up. So we certainly need to look at that. But I came away there inspired. I think I learned a lot. And then the courses that we did, uh, the Peter Block community building, um, the time to think, those are skills that I now use in my role as the MEC for social development. And we are right now busy looking at the migration of early childhood development centers to education. And Louise will definitely be getting a call from me because I said uh, to the Premier just this morning, there are some wonderful examples of people doing great work in our schools. And we just need to replicate that model because to me, it has to be about communities. It's the ABCD, asset-based community development. And unless we harness the inputs of communities and co-create with them, we will not achieve the outcomes. So I certainly fly the Partners for Possibility flag. I constantly tweet and retweet. And I must admit, I'm hooked for life. I am a part of this family. And I've never, ever felt that I was not a part of the family, even though on some occasions I'm quiet for days because I'm so busy. And Juliet, uh, your MEC for Education is one of my best friends. Sis Polly, I will certainly let her know about the good work happening there. And I'm going to tell her to pop by your school and go and give you a personal hug from me. Thank you, Louise, and thank you to everyone on this platform for the opportunity. It is real, it is authentic, and it is about being proudly South African and understanding that we are all unique. Yet, if we combine all our different skills, expertise, and experience, and we focus on the greater good, we can still save this great country of ours. Thank you so much.